So just how many models should you put in a squad? Let's take a look at some of the considerations that you'll be thinking about when you make that decision. Hello and welcome back to Auspex Tactics for another quick tip video where we'll be talking about the pros and cons of large and small units. Many units have a variable size in Warhammer 40k and some of them can be such a big difference that it completely changes the role of the unit on the battlefield. In this video we'll be talking about the pros and cons of having the points invested in multiple units of one squad, say having two five-man tactical squads, compared with the pros of having them all together in one big ten-man tactical squad. In general, ignoring any upgrades, the points cost would be the same, but you get some different positives and negatives depending on the unit in question. So let's take a look. So here we have a list of the pros of both types. We'll start with a list of the advantages of taking multiple small units. Firstly, they have less morale difficulties. If you only, say, have a five-man Space Marine squad, there's a good chance they'll never fail a morale test, even if they take four casualties. If you compare this to a ten-man squad, they could potentially start losing some to morale, say, because they have the option of losing, like, seven or eight casualties in a turn. So the multiple small squads will never really have to worry about morale, but the ten-man one might. Small units force the opponents to overkill, more than large units. For example, if the Space Marines come under threat from a really big weapon such as a Imperial Knight's Avenger Gatling Cannon or some enormous weapon, there's a reasonable chance it might well just wipe out a 5-man Space Marine squad, but if they've been able to point it at a 10-man squad, then they maybe might kill 6 or 7 Space Marines. This means by having multiple small squads, each time you wipe out a unit, your opponent will probably be wasting some firepower which they dedicated towards shooting the unit but is wasted because they've wiped out the last man in it. With bigger units, they can afford to pile their huge weapons into each unit, knowing that they're going to use every single drop of firepower trying to wipe them out. In terms of these small squads' shooting abilities, they actually have the power of activating this effect for themselves a little bit less. Say, for example, you had a big full squad of six aggressors that wanted to shoot a load of infantry. They'd have to declare all of their shooting in one go, not knowing if it would be enough to wipe out a squad that they really, really needed dead and be able to shoot some of their guns at another less threatening unit. They might be forced to pile all their guns into that squad that they absolutely need to kill and risk overkilling some of them. Two small squads of aggressors, you could have the first one fire at that squad that needed to die. If that squad dies, then the second squad is free to shoot up whatever it wants. So by having multiple small squads, the next squad shooting has more information about what is dead and therefore will overkill less. Small squads obviously have a smaller footprint, as every model needs to be in cover to gain the advantage of cover, this might make it a lot more possible for you to be able to do that. Also having a smaller footprint might be better for using terrain to block line of sight to the unit, where a large unit might just have one model that can't quite fit into that line of sight blocking terrain, letting the entire squad be shot. Small units fill up detachment slots better, which is why you often see troops in particular being run as five-man squads in the Space Marine Army. Filling out those battalions is very important for getting all of the command points, so if you can fill out a battalion just with taking 15 bodies, then it's a lot more efficient than filling one out with 30 bodies. This also works for things such as brigades. Say you needed to fill out all the slots in a brigade, you're going to do that a lot more easily if you take small units as opposed to big units. Small squads often get little additional bonuses, such as a free squad sergeant upgrade. This will give you an extra attack in close combat, and that's certainly useful. And it also gives you more options to take the war gear that that sergeant can bring, should you want to. Say, for example, throwing on a storm bolter onto a squad sergeant. This can also work for other unit upgrades. Say, for example, the intercessor's auxiliary grenade launcher. By having two small squads of intercessors, you'll be able to fire two grenade launchers. Grenades themselves are another bonus, as two squads will be able to throw two grenades if needed, whereas a big squad could only throw one. Small squads can be in different places at once, which is an obvious benefit, which means that, say, with two squads of Space Marine Scouts, they could screen out two completely different areas of the board, or capture two objectives, where a big squad will be limited to being in one location. Small squads can be less of a pain if you lose all of them or get them tied up in close combat. For example, if you're using multiple small squads to screen your battle line and the enemy drops down a big close combat unit and wipes out the most outlying infantry unit, you'll care a lot less if this is a small squad compared with a big 10-man squad. Similarly, if, say, an enemy gets an infantry unit into close combat with a shooting squad, 
you'll care a lot less if it's a small squad compared with a big 10-man squad of Devastators, for example, that really want to be firing their guns. Finally, and one I forgot to include on this list, is the advantage of any free ability that the army gets on a squad-by-squad basis. The biggest one that I can think of off the top of my head is the Salamanders or Master Artisans reroll, which is one reroll to hit and wound per squad per phase. This is a massive incentive to take lots of individual small units, as the more units you have, the more rerolls you'll have, and they genuinely are powerful enough to make a bad unit into a good unit, or a good unit into a better unit. So on the whole, small squads generally will do better in a straight one versus one fight with the big squads due to overkill and being able to allocate their firepower better. They fill out detachment slots, can be in more places on the board, have fewer morale difficulties, and can sometimes access individual squad by squad upgrades. So why would you ever take large squads? Well, let's take a look. One of the biggest reasons in 8th edition for taking big squads is that there are lots of abilities that affect units on a unit by unit basis. One of the biggest is stratagems where the rule is usually phrased as you pay this many command points, this unit gets better by this amount for the rest of the phase or something similar. Obviously if you're using that on a big squad you're going to get a huge amount more benefit from it than using it on a very small squad. For example, if you use the Salamander's Strastium Crucible of Battle for plus one to wound, you'll get a lot more out of it using it on a six-man squad of Flamer Aggressors compared to just a three-man squad of Flamer Aggressors because it'll just be buffing more shots and more hits. This applies exactly the same for Psychic Powers. Usually these target an individual unit to give them some buff or boosted ability. There's also a bunch of character-specific effects that affect one unit, such as Chaplains, Litanies, or the Signum Arrays from Torgaradon or Phyros, all of which affect one unit, so the bigger the unit, the better. You don't see this often in the Space Marine Codex, if at all, but some units in other codexes get specific benefits for being above a certain size. For example, Orc Boys will get their extra attack when they're above 20 models, and Plague Bearers will be minus one to hit when they're above 20 models. These are very decent benefits, and can certainly incentivize you to take them in large blocks. In terms of missions, large units give up fewer kill points, and this could really skew a game if your opponent is fielding all the same units as you, but in twice as big units, then you're really going to struggle to outkill him in a game where you're playing kill points. This also has effect in Maelstrom missions, because a lot of the cards will involve kill this many units in the shooting phase, or the fight phase, or the whole turn, so having fewer units on the battlefield is better in that case. It'll also apply to ITC, because... They also will score you points for killing a unit or killing more units. A big advantage of large units is casualty removal. I did an entire video on this and I really recommend checking it out. Casualty removal can be quite powerful in 40k, whether you're removing models to make an opponent's charge longer, removing the models that aren't on an objective, or ensuring that you keep the models that are blocking an opponent's charge or movement. Large units do this a lot better than smaller units, because they have a lot more bodies on the tabletop, so they can choose which of those bodies they most want alive after the enemy kills half the unit. This is particularly noticeable, say, if you're screening with a 20-man unit versus two 10-man units. If the enemy moves up a fighty character right next to your lines, then the enemy knows which 10-man unit they'd have to kill to break through. But if you have a 20-man unit blocking their path, they'll have to remove the entire thing, because you can just keep the models that are nearest to the character and blocking their path. Large units are less susceptible to being killed on Overwatch. For example, if you have some Vanguard veterans wanting to charge a Night Crusader with a lot of guns, the Night Crusader might well kill a bunch of Marines as they try and charge in. If you've got 5-man units, then you run the risk of the entire squad being wiped, and that Knight getting another round of shooting at the next squad that tries to charge it. Even if you get some men in, the squad's likely to be so depleted that it might well not do much and just get wiped in close combat and return. If you're charging with a 10-man unit of Vanguard Vets, and you lose those 3 or 4 models, your squad's still going to be at decent fighting capacity once it's got in, and you know for almost certain it will make that charge. In addition, it's a lot safer to be charging with one big 10-man squad, compared with 2 units of 5 side by side, as you really run the risk that only half of them will be able to get in. It'll also be more useful to spend that command point on a stratagem, to re-roll the charge of the big unit, to ensure they all get in, rather than spending that command point individually on one of the five men units. Large units are also better for interrupting in close combat. Say you're charging a squad of vanguard veterans with your own vanguard veterans. If you have a 10-man squad, you know that 
All of them will get to fight before the enemy does, maybe wiping them out. If you have two squads of five side by side charging the same squad, you'll get to fight with five, and then the enemy will have the option to spend two command points to interrupt with what's left of their squad, and potentially target the unit that you haven't fought with, potentially stopping you from fighting with them. You might just have lost the combat, compared with almost certainly winning it, if you charged with a full unit of ten. Finally, one quite important ability is the ability to charge a lot of units in close combat with a big unit. For example, if you charge a guard squad at a tank, maybe they'll be able to spread out and touch another tank, and lock both vehicles up. I've had more than one occasion where I've had a 30-man squad of conscripts early in 8th edition that's charged one tank, and then used their charge move, pile in and consolidate, to tie up something like 5 or 6 tanks, locking down the entire enemy battle line for the next turn. Having a bigger sized unit can really cause some massive disruption in your opponent's battle line. So overall, you'll have to make the choice about whether you want to field your units as large units or small units. But I think that this breakdown does quite well to illustrate why we often tend to see a lot of smaller objective scoring units, such as troops, being fielded as small units to fill detachment slots, get on different objectives and optimise their mediocre amount of damage. Compare with big heavy hitting units, say things like aggressors, terminator squads, vanguard veterans, or other big elite units, are often fielded as bigger squads, mainly to get the most out of the stratagem's psychic powers and one unit bonuses. I think it also demonstrates quite well why we see a lot of big screening units such as plague bearers fielded in 30 man units to take advantages of all the benefits of tactical casualty removal contesting multiple objectives, and tagging a lot of units in close combat. I hope this has been some help to you guys. I'm certain that this isn't a complete list. If you can think of any other benefits of large units or small units, please feel free to post them down below. As always, thank you very much for listening to All Specs Tactics. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, or to support me on Patreon if you're finding these videos useful. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next video.